Snooper Thursday! Woo! Yeah. Hey, no look, one's screaming geez. but me. <laughs> I didn't know there was a, a scream screaming. that had to happen. I just like, uh, <laughs> He's like, whoa, what the hell's going on here? It's like if you've never seen Wayne World's, Wayne's World before and you start watching. Wayne's <laughs> World! Oh, no. I you don't know how to do it. You're like, what? <laughs> I'll get it next time. <laughs> nice. That's all right. So there's like a, Whoo. Well, we usually get some, like brewers and stuff that will literally just look at us like, what? the hell is going on? Like, what are you doing? What was that? <laughs> so, but uh, we're here, we're actually here at Playground. This is a new restaurant, not even open yet, in Santa Ana. Uh, it's actually like a thriving little walking town. Downtown and Santa Ana. Downtown much. Santa Ana, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're in East End, formerly the Fiesta Village, if you could see all the carnicerias and... Yeah, the little food you, carts yeah. that are being wheeled around. around, around right? If you need yeah, a yeah. quinceanera address, this is the place. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it is. Yeah, yeah, there's like 10 quinceanera addresses uh, with a stone throw away from here. And you go next block, you got another 10. It's pretty incredible. And if That's you excellent. want your girlfriend to wear just the slutty. <laughs> just the <laughs> most slutty. <laughs> just, the mo just like... Well, this, like, why wouldn't you want to come down here? Yeah. <laughs> there's like everything. It's like, there's like a, a, a shirt they have where that's like one square foot. <laughs> nice. It's like, that's Total. it. It's like one square foot of stuff and it's just the entire, like, neck to knees. And Very it just nice. like, looks like a spider knit it. <laughs> and uh, with us is uh, Jason Quinn, who is the chef and owner. Yes. And Jared Dooley, who is the... Director of, director of libations. Director of libations. It's a custom title. Okay. Yeah, I mean, quasi-general manager. Cool. If somebody has a problem, they're actually going to talk to me because Jason doesn't want to deal with people. He's like, I don't have time for you. Go talk to him. Formerly so. of the brewery. <laughs> formerly of the brewery formerly and the brewery. formerly of I Am A Craft Beer Drinker video. Yes. So, the, the much acclaimed, already, you know. The much acclaimed, yes. Yeah. I think it's on IMDB, so you know you made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell us a little bit about like what you guys, because you were previously um, on the Lime Truck. It's true. Which, uh, were you on the great food truck race? I did, I was the winner. How was that, by the way? Uh, it was pretty fun. It was, you know, we got to 3,500 miles. Stephanie Morgan's actually here right now from Seabridge. She was on the show, too. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Hopefully she's gonna move next door to us. Yeah, we're hoping <laughs> yeah. she becomes our neighbor. So it's like all the food trucks are parking in Santa Ana yeah. permanently. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. we, you just scooped everybody right now. Yeah. Seabridge next door to, to yeah. Playground. Nice. So. But you know, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that the show was so fun and we got to, to meet like incredible people across the country. And we also realized that uh, the craft beer is really just on the coast, just like so predominant. And then when you get into these other cities, it's like, you really have to search for it. Yeah. Hmm. They're like, oh, you make food with beer? Like Budweiser? Like what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I actually had the, the Boulevard Smokestack series, like Saison, mm -hmm. Saison Brett. Yeah. And I was like, this is fantastic. And we ended up in Kansas and I was like, Everywhere has Boulevard. This is so cool, and it was just like Boulevard Hef, and it was just garbage. You know? Nice. But they, they're so capable like of making wah, such wah. great beer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, we're in Kansas. we're in Kansas. Such good beer here, and everyone's like, it's like really? you get to Hollywood, you want to get <laughs> like, no, and it's like, really. wait a minute. Yeah, this no, this I have to serve tables, out. and I have to get into porn. To... <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> that video is later. Goes down that yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so now you've you've left the lime truck. You are opening up your own place. Uh, what kind of food, like? We were talking a little earlier, you're talking about reinventing the dining experience. So tell me a little bit about that. Uh, not reinventing as much as just what we've done is basically taken all the things that we've liked that other people have done that you know, no one's doing exactly what we are and we just kind of took all the elements that we liked and made our dream place. You know? And we've, we really just went out of the way. You, know? you don't just work 10 months and spend all the money that you do and, and do it like half what you want. You know, it's like right. well, we can do everything that we want and then maybe we decide later that, okay, that was a bad idea, <laughs> you know? Like, we, we're, we're the first restaurant. But you're fluid enough that when you decide those, you, you can move exactly. on to I mean, we, we're, yeah. we, we understand that you can't, you know, we wrote a business plan, right? And the only thing we knew for sure was that whatever was on that business plan was not gonna be what's here. <laughs> you know, like, that's the only thing that you know for sure is it's not gonna be just that. You know, we're the first restaurant that uh, includes a mandatory kitchen gratuity. Really? Yeah, 3% of, you know, whatever you buy, you spend 100 bucks, three of it goes to the kitchen. Very nice. Oh, that's cool. We're yeah. un we're underpaid, man. No, I, I agree. I over tip too. Yeah. Like, not 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 because I am dumb, but because I <laughs> choose to over tip because you know the people well, that make that food I think should get paid more money. We don't. Well, and what we've done is whatever we, the case may be. Yeah, we've promised that every single person who touches your food at its entire you know journey in this restaurant is someone who's actively pursuing this as their career. Mm -hmm. This is not someone. We don't have line cooks. We don't All have right. people who are hired hands. You don't have wa uh, waitresses who are really actresses? No, I mean, we just, yeah. we've said yeah. to everyone, you know, always said was, porn stars. We, this, yeah. guy, this guy just walked in and we took to, walked around the restaurant and said, look, 
if you get your if you become a sister, like you get your your server, we'll hire you. It's, it's that simple. Just right. show that you have passion towards what we're doing, and we've really just you know like the the chefs that we have working here are, are truly chefs. I mean, they're they're people who have worked all over the place. You know, it's not something to to scoff at. That no. yeah, I mean, we and we anticipate to be slightly crucified for saying that we're doing kitchen gratuity, but. You oh yeah, what? there's always gonna be people that come in and it's like, I don't want to. Tip we don't. We don't want those people here. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is an artisan place. It's a craft destination. Yeah. You know, we we let. I definitely see this as being like a place where you you generate a lot of regulars coming in on a regular basis. Hopefully, yeah. I, I mean, and the other yeah. thing is that if if you like it one time, we're changing the menu every week. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the beer that we have, we really just have open accounts with different breweries. We don't have an order sheet. You know? Right. We're just sitting there and saying, hey, send us whatever you want to send us. That's cool. Well, and Jared, tell us a little bit about what your plan is for the beer, like what kind of beers you're going to have on. Um, and actually, before you do that, because I don't want to stare at this any longer, I want yeah. to start drinking it. Yeah. We're drinking Acer Quercus, which is on your mm. bottle list. It's true. And uh, it's an amazing beer mm. from the brewery, so I'll just give a cheers to the playground. Mm. I drank first. I'm sorry. Right. I drank okay. first too. Oh, really, really good beer. This is the collaboration that the brewery did when you were there, actually. So. Yeah. With, and um, uh, with Lawson's. Lawson Finest Liquids out of uh, Vermont. A maple smoke beer. Mm -hmm. Kind of maple smoke porter. Um, just, just awesome beer. The maple that was you put in the beer, or the, the wood that the maple came from was used to smoke the malts that went into this beer. Uh, so nice. cool. Yeah. Very, very cool thing. The tree gave every part of its too. life yeah. for this beer. And I, 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 I vaguely remember a story about this collaboration's inception happened uh, Drunkenly between Pat and the uh, owner of Lawson's Finest Liquids at Great American Beer Festival a few nice. years before. We should do a collaboration. Yeah. And <laughs> that's a couple, couple cool. years later. I think that's how all collaborations <laughs> yeah. start is like a drunken conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you make great beer. So do you. We should make great beer together. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, my biggest thing, uh, I, I truly believe in beer being the people's drink. Mm -hmm. um, it started out as, you know, what you serve field hands, you know, a porter's called a porter because all the dock workers, all the porters, just that's what they drank, you know, became their beer. Right. And uh, with that in mind, I, we've come up with a system where we're able to serve every beer on draft for $5. Um, this is our 11 ounce glass. Uh, certain beers, we fold, you know, $5 for an 11 ounce. We have $5 for a 16 ounce and $5 for a seven ounce beer. Depending on the style. Depending on the style, yeah. the beer, the, the alcohol. ABB, right. Um, the cost. And yeah. most, of the, most of the beers that are like, fit in that seven ounce category are not things you'd want 16 ounces. Exactly. Yeah. Right. We were talking about that a little earlier, too, because like, like you said, Utart, like, it's a fantastic beer, but if you drink a pint of it, you're not going to enjoy the last 11 ounces anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we almost have the same uh, thing with our kitchen as well. It's like every, the plating size, what we want to do is ideally give you one less bite than you truly wanted. You know, we want to leave you lingering as opposed to you know a big huge plate is like right halfway through like you're not I'm unbuttoning just, your your belt yeah, on the way out like oh god well no you're gonna do that because you're gonna order one of everything <laughs> <laughs> but you know the point is that of each plate you know you're gonna sit there and you know wow i wish i kind of had just one more piece of that or mm -hmm. you know it's not that all right at this point i just paid for it so i might as well shovel it in my mouth right you know? we don't have whole racks of ribs so saying, you, know? <laughs> you can't order the pound of ribs 60 60 ounce prime rib is not as <laughs> excellent if it did be perfect though yeah, it would be the best time <laughs> ever, but we, yeah, we don't, we don't have that. Um, well, that's good. That's a shift in the way Americans think at this point. I mean, you yeah. know, we're, we're a supersized uh, nation at this point where everything's bigger, bigger, bigger. What, what were we talking about the other night? The extra large chalupa now or whatever that's like bigger than your face. It's I like knew, the you bigger need like a gets, pitcher to get it. To yeah. Get the whole thing. It's, and it's like, what, what are you doing? And the bigger things get, the more the quality goes down. Yeah. You yeah. kind of make up for that size, you know? Right. So... So what, what kind of, like, what plan do you have as far as, like, uh, is it going to be kind of whatever you like for beer, or? Um, I definitely wholeheartedly believe and uh, absolutely have an opinion on beer, mm -hmm. um, on the beer I'm serving. Um, absolutely beers that I love, but, I mean, there are some things that people love, or I know Jason loves, you know, Double, double Bastard. Mm -hmm. It's not one of my favorite beers, but I know Jason loves it. And, yeah, and, and Nitro Beers. And Nitro Beers, yeah. I like Nitro Beers, too. Um, my biggest thing on the draft list is I when when I go out to drink, I want to come to a place and get a, get a beer that I want. And that kind of means sometimes I want a big heavy beer, sometimes I want, you know, a nice beautiful like Hellas Lager, you know. Right. Super light, I can, you know, have a whole pint and just be fantastic and super delicious and having that spectrum 
of beers. Um, and even just, I mean, on the business side, you, you people don't know about craft beer. I mean, even today, as much as craft beers exploded, people don't know about it. The price makes it a little unapproachable at times. You know, yeah. you go you go to a place uh, and you sit there and you're like, oh, really? I spent like twenty two dollars a bottle for this. Yeah, it's just people are like, well, what if I don't like it? And so what we've done is kind of make it super approachable. You can come in and try five different craft beers in different pour sizes and and and, and really have you know you can have oud tart, four calling birds. Uh, Yellowtail and Double Bastard and you know Green Flash IPA and you sit there and you said, "Wow, I just had five incredibly different right. California beers, all within what 60 miles of here." Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you're like, "Well, I just spent 25 bucks. I had this this huge spectrum of something, and I now have at least an, a greater understanding of yeah. what this it's is." A, it, cost affecting the cost makes craft beer a lot more approachable, like you were saying, and that, mm -hmm. I think that's a big aspect of it because. You know, there are a lot of beers that get put to market that are like, this beer is 40 bucks for a bottle. And people are like, I'm not spending that on a bottle yeah. of beer. You know, and um, when you can come into a place like this and spend the same that you would for a Budweiser down the street, that does make it very much more access mm -hmm. accessible to say, yeah, you can try this beer and you can have five ounces or seven ounces or 11 ounces for $5. And that's, yeah. you know. And I gotta yeah. say, five bucks is a great price. I mean, yeah, yeah this it is, is it's kind it's of, such uh, an add -on. would you consider this like a gastro-y kind of pubish kind of place? You know what? You know. Well, the, I, I, I wrote my thesis on, on British cooking, so we, we, we do want to stay away from the idea of gastro pub. We are a, a chef-driven restaurant right. that is beer-driven as well. Because a lot of the gastro pub, at least a couple that I've been to, not a lot, but um, it's just stuff is, seems so overpriced, like to the point where it's like, you really don't have to charge this much for this pour. Yeah. We, you know, we're I mean, so transparent. I know how much this beer costs. Yeah. And, yeah. Come on. you know. So five bucks is really good, and changing the, the pour size, like that's... Uh, that's something that's really sticking with me. That's a really good idea. Well, Five you know, bucks is pretty cheap. What we've done is we've sat there and said, look, we, we don't care whether you order a bottle or draft. We make mark the same market the same way. We're basically making four dollars a beer. Right. You, you come in and you're you're gonna whatever you know costs us a dollar on draft is what you get for five. If you you want a bottle, it's our cost plus four, or if it's mm -hmm. seven fifty, our cost plus eight. Right. We're not we're not hiding behind that. We're not marking up 1.3%, 1.5%. We're just saying. Well, yeah, hey, and that's look. a. I mean, a lot of places for a bottle uh, like yours. I think we were talking about Acer Quirk. It's like this bottle would cost twenty two dollars. Uh, this this bottle retails for twenty. Right. It sells. We sell it here for twenty two. Right. Because it costs us fourteen dollars. Exactly. We add eight. And that's, that's and I, a, yeah, normal, yeah. a normal yeah. restaurant that you go to, this would be thirty five, almost forty dollars. Seriously. Yeah. They well, almost well, double it. Or well, double the price essentially. Right. That's what you're yeah. yeah. Well, we're banking on, to be honest with you, is quantity over because you know. Okay, if I'm going to go to an unnamed uh, beer destination in Orange County. And they're gonna try to sell me a, a 375 of consecration for 35 bucks. It's either I'm gonna buy that and not have anything else, right? Or I'm not gonna buy anything like this else. is this is my budget for my dinner. Well, so. yeah, I that's mean, a really like, good point. Like too, the, yeah. the truth of the matter is, we'd rather you come in and you know we'd rather make four bucks on each one and have you buy three of them, right? And we you know then make eight dollars on one. I mean, at the end of the day, we're making more money, you know. It's, yeah. and, and a lot of people are like, well, four, bu four bucks on every beer. It's like, yeah, well, someone has to pay for the lights and the roof. Yeah, and the, exactly. And it's like, yeah. The I people mean, handing you the beer and yeah. Yeah, opening I mean, the like, beer. You know, we, we think that it's incredibly fair, and we are wanting to broadcast the fact that this is how we price our stuff. You know, call us out on it. If you think that we, you know, oh, that's not a fair price, it's like, we'll show you the receipt for what we bought it for. I mean, we're not, right. we're not trying to lie and say you know, anything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we spent so much time, Jared and I literally handpicked our opening bottle list. We, we drove all over the Which place. Which is exceptional, by the way. I mean, yeah, you know, having, we, having taken a peek through your, your fridge, you guys have an amazing I mean, We have of uh, Russian River Temptation mm -hmm. for $17 a bottle. Right. Uh, I mean, we, we got it for, is it 16 No, I think it's less. I think it's like $15 It might even be 15 Yeah, something like that. I mean, but we, and that's one of the best beers I've ever had. Right. And you sit there and like, that's a beer that I remember the first time I ever saw it was at Father's Office and they were bragging about how you can't get it anywhere. And we just kind of stumbled on a on a half case somewhere, and I was like, "Oh yeah, we're getting you know, we're getting this." And and I, I couldn't help myself; I drank one, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> yeah, I saw the well, light. Well, it's a fringe benefit of owning the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the the restaurant is honestly only as good as the food. Yeah, in the yep. end. So let's talk a little bit. Like, what do we have in front of us here? Um, we have just some really cool stuff. This is uh, you know, they're both beautifully presented by one of our chefs, uh, Frank, who has worked in you know Michelin level kitchens and. It's just exceptional at you know visualizing a plate. Um, this we have a sous vide pork tenderloin. Uh, it's chilled with uh, pickled cauliflower, pickled uh, red fresno chilies, and a little bit of uh, razal hanout uh, Greek yogurt. 
Ra's al Ghul? Ra's al Ghul. Oh, okay. I'm not not the Batman guy. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Sorry, it's a, it's a, geek. This is yeah. like almost a, a Middle Eastern presentation of it, besides the fact that it's used, using pork, which okay. is normal. looks incredible. I mean, and it, you said it's <laughs> sous vide. What does that mean exactly? Uh, basically, this uh, we, we seal this this pork tenderloin uh, with a little bit of butter and pickled mustard seeds and garlic mm -hmm. in, a, uh, in a cryovac bag. Okay. And then we then dropped it into a controlled temperature water bath at 140 degrees. Basically, we uh, made it in a way that the meat could actually never overcook. It could never get past the 140 degree mark, which we believe is perfect for pork tenderloin. Right. So what you have is, is literally, we, we, we almost cheated. We didn't really do anything. We just knew how to put it in the bag and seal it and then dropped it in another machine that, that does it. You know, it just, nice. it just understanding product and understanding right. the technology. And uh, you know, we, we put these beautiful colored things on top that we've made everything from scratch. And nice. Here we have Humboldt Fog, which is a beautiful goat cheese that's layered with ash from Cypress Grove. We, we drove down to uh, Chino Farms the other day and bought the most beautiful tomatoes and purslane. Melissa's nice. gave us this uh, jam right here, which is made from prickly pear and yellow scorpion chilies. Wow. wow. I don't want to I You want should to absolutely eat them. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm like, I don't want to mess this up. So Go ahead, go to town. I'm gonna... Yeah, that, the pork tenderloin is shaved and insanely thin, so it just melts in your mouth tender. And there's a nice acid coming from the pickled cauliflower and then the heat from the red Fresno chilies. This time of year, they're just insanely hot. Mmm. Mm. I love that cheese. That's like salty and sweet. A little tiny bit of heat. Yeah. You know, the uh, basically, this is just our kind of attempt at taking oh. something that's so beautiful. Yeah, there you go. You gotcha. Uh, you know, it's our attempt to take something beautiful and just kind of present it in, a, in an elegant way. And everything that we're doing here food-wise, uh, I mean, what I've said to all my, all my chefs is, look, guys, like what I can do mm. is not as good as what we can do. Right. And you know, we've, we've sat there the first couple of weeks and we've met and we've talked and we've created this opening menu that is just you know, showcasing all these techniques that we're really proud of and ingredients that are so good. We, we've sat there and said, you know what, let's at least for right now not spare any expense when it comes to that stuff. Right you know, like like uh, my meat guy called me and said, hey, I know I'm sending you six ounce Hager steaks. Do you want prime or do you want choice? It's a $2 difference. I said, fuck it. Like, let's just, let's do it right. Like, let's go mm -hmm. with it. Exactly. And you know, I mean, obviously that's something that does get um, pushed along to the consumer, but right. we want to be a place that you go. Yeah, when you come into a place like that, that's what you want to expect, you know? What we want to do is have a place where someone says, you know what, I know no matter what, we can always get the most incredible quality at a place like this. So for instance, all of our seafood comes in whole. We're getting, you know, the whole fish. Uh, if it's sea urchin, we're getting them live in, the sh in their uh, container, I guess you could say, in their body. That's cool. You know, uh, <laughs> wow. we're, we're getting live crawfish flown in from Louisiana. You know, we're, do, we're doing all of these things that we believe we're doing them the right way. Right. And, you know, and, and we will let our, our consumer really kind of be the person who defines if what we're doing is right or wrong. You know, if we continue to get business, we'll keep pushing the boundaries and using really the best products we can. And, and we're, we're so ambitious. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's a, a more badass group of chefs in the entire country right now. Right on. Well, I mean, there are people who are clearly more talented than us, but at the same time, nobody is approaching this subject and doing it with as much dedication and passion and attention to detail as we are. That's excellent. And, well, and all the while thumbing our nose at the way it's been done every other place. Right. Yeah, I mean, we've I, all worked every at. time we have a meeting, I always remind everyone on the staff that this place is just a fuck you to traditional restaurants. That's excellent. I mean, we, we don't have servers. It's very punk rock. Yeah, I mean, it truly, it truly <laughs> is, you know? Uh, all the chefs, we all went and got tattooed the other day. We all did it together before we, we haven't even opened nice. yet. Nice. We, really? we have matching tattoos, yeah. It says, <laughs> it says you and me and all our friends, oh, that's which, cool. is, which is what our, our motto is here. Right. I'll take a picture of that. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, up, it's up on the wall. It's up on our chalkboard, too. But yeah, I mean, we, all, we all have it. You know, and we, we haven't even opened yet. And this group of chefs, That's we all- That's commitment. Yeah, we all bought it. I said, I said, hey, you guys, uh, you know, now I can't fire you. <laughs> you know, I'm fucking stuck with these assholes. Is that like the girlfriend thing where you put the name on your arm and you, you know, then it's the kiss of death pretty much? I mean, yeah, hopefully not, because you got, you, got, you got six anxious eyes yeah, staring doomed. at you right now. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? We, we almost have, we have too much talent to, to, to go down without a fight. Right. You know what I mean? And well, that's, that's awesome. I mean, this is, uh, this really is like not what I expected at all. Yeah. To be honest with you, when we when we talked about coming down here and doing a show, I was like, okay. And I even told John, I'm like, I don't even really know what I'm gonna talk about. It's like we're this random restaurant, okay, whatever. Um, it's nice that, that there's, there's something different about you guys that there is something to talk right. about. Where it's just like, okay, here's our food. We have good beer. 
and that's it. You know, the the price the pricing structure. The I like the the tip inclusion. I mean, you that's know, what? Really it's just, cool. you know, it's one of those things. that's like at least even if even if we go down with that, like if that's our, if that's the thing that people are like, fuck that place. I don't want to go there because I have to spend an extra eighteen cents every time I buy a six dollar plate. Right. You know, if yeah. that's the reason that we don't survive, it's like okay, well. Who cares? Fuck America then. <laughs> yeah, 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 so. yeah, yeah. At this point, it's like I, what I said is I was like, look, I'd rather be 25 years old, open my dream place, mm -hmm. and have it fail, than wait till I'm 65 and open it then and have it fail. You know, it's like right. it's like you wait your it's whole better life to try it, and even if it doesn't work out, which I mean, it's going to. It's obvious. Yeah. But I mean, even if it doesn't, it's like you don't have to live in that wonder of like, what if it would have? Yeah. Know? Yeah. What so. if? Oh God! If I only had done it this right. way, the way I really wanted to. You know, so we're just we're just doing it. And I honestly, the the idea of like, oh yeah, we have great food and this random chef, and we have a, uh, we have a selection of craft beer. It's kind of starting to get a little played out. Yeah. So it's nice to see that you guys are kind of taking a different stance with it. You're kind of going a different direction with it. Um, I can't wait to you guys. Oh, when do you open? Uh, we open uh, the eighteenth. So 18th. It's, it's actually okay. a week from yesterday. A week from yesterday, which yeah. means uh, this will actually come out on the nineteenth. So. so you're gonna so. So we're open. We're open. <laughs> Come, on down. Come on down. Come on down. What are you missing out on? Dude? It's crazy. So. There's a huge line outside. You better get down here. <laughs> so that's excellent. Uh, I really appreciate you guys taking time. I know you guys are really super busy. This is really all we had to do up. today, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. With you. He's like, we really we just all wanted to go home. So it's nice that you showed up finally. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> But yeah, no, I really appreciate it. I can't wait till you guys are open and come in here and, and try some of the stuff that you guys are going to be putting out and I'm looking forward to it. So. We are banking uh, quite a bit on our craft beer community. So yeah, yeah we, well, and, we'll, and we'll support our, it for sure. It's all of our bartenders are beer servers, uh, Cicerone beer servers, level one, that's our entire bar staff. Nice. Um, I am level two, you know, oh, fancy me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have my lapel. Where, where are your lapel? Yeah, I don't know. You, know, you what, could do what some people do and have it stitched on all of your shirts. Who, who, who does that? Oh, I don't know. I can't oh, remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what, what I've said this whole- Name Ryan's a Dr. Mill. <laughs> 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 that guy, yeah. You know, what we really think, uh, the reason we have the you, me, and all our friends is that, like I said, you know, what, what I can do is not as good as what we can do. And then if we extend that, it's like, what we can do is better if our friends are helping too. Mm -hmm. And we, Jared and I drove down to San Diego and we, you know, talked to Matt from Ballast Point and we talked to all, you know, Green Flash and all, all these places. And then the next thing you know, we said, hey, listen, everyone at our bar is, is beer server. I mean, we all care. We're not just having, you know, just, oh, just pretty girls or, you know, right. we're, we're, just, we're real people. And because of that, the breweries had such a great response where they're like, yeah, hey, we'll send you our, you know, we'll send you our great, our good stuff because, you know, sooner or later we become almost the place that they really want us in their beer. It's like, we're not right. making a ton of money on it. We're not marking it up to crazy things and, and right. they make the same amount no matter what. Well, you guys are, you guys are giving off the same attitude as the craft brewer community does as well, which is let's help each other out. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do this and make a living, but not a killing. And let's, you know, give people what's, what we think is the greatest thing on the planet, yeah. you know? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And, and we're, we are a truly artisan place. We are a scratch kitchen. You're not gonna find ketchup here, not because we don't like it. I love ketchup with my french fries. I we hate just, ketchup, Well, for the record. I like ketchup. We just so. can't make ketchup that's <laughs> as good as Cisco ketchup, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, right. we, we had a long discussion about it, several times. And yeah. it's like, do we want ketchup? Can we make it? Do we like it? Can we make it better than than? I like it when some people make their own ketchup, but you know what? Ketchup is such a touchy subject because people have this kind of idea of like this is what it is, and if you you know put applesauce in it, and right. all of a sudden you're um, you're gonna get martyred, right. you know? <laughs> Heathen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I have make artisan ketchup. That's my new my new goal. The new goal. <laughs> make artisan ketchup. Good, good luck. If you get a good recipe, let bottled, me know. Bottled bottled <laughs> under John Holzer artisan ketchup. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Yeah. So. But what we're doing instead is we're we're working on ketchup salt. So basically, we, we take tomato powder, vinegar powder, and then all the you know clove and allspice and stuff like that, mix it with a little bit of sugar, and that's what we want to season our that's French fries. That's a good idea. Yeah. So it's that and same. It's that same. actually, because I, I I grew up hating ketchup. I've people that put ketchup on their fries. Were you touched as a little boy? <laughs> <laughs> where did wow. The, where did the Heinz? Where did that come from? <laughs> where did, what did the Heinz man do to you? Nice. <laughs> where did he touch you? My mom Point said ketchup doll. doesn't go there. <laughs> Um, anyway, wow. uh, but the idea of actually salting my fries with ketchup flavored salt is much more appealing to me than 
drizzling goo all over them. <laughs> going along that same line of thought, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're we're, we're going to try it out. If it sucks, we're not going to do it. But yeah, we're, right. we're going we're gonna to go out. Like, yeah, we, we will not have... Experimentation is the is the key. you got to do it. There's no way we're going to mail every single dish. We, we'll fuck up. Yeah. We know that. <laughs> but, but, you know, we've we've extended the, the you know, warning to our guests. Say, hey, look, if you don't like something, fucking tell us. We'll make it better. Like, right. Don't leave here angry. We're, we're here ready to... <laughs> Ready to help anyone. We want to make you happy. Yeah. <laughs> our right. job as restaurateurs is to make sure that you leave happier than when you came here. Right. And that's our only thing. And if, if, if we are even close to failing that, just tell us. And yeah. We'll fucking change it. You know? Yeah, we, we basically started out with the assumption we're going to fall on our face and we're going to get up and try something different and then fall right back on our face again. <laughs> and then we're going to try something different and then it fails again. It's like, oh shit, well, maybe we should do something different. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fine, we'll bring the ketchup in. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, we'll charge twelve dollars for three exactly. ounces of, of Tokyo. Nice. You know. Well, on that note, thank you guys again very much. We look forward to you being open, yeah. and um, definitely, 18th. if you're in the Santa Ana area or within a hundred miles, make the trip down <laughs> here. It's going to be worthwhile. And uh, until next week, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers. That's a nice sign up. Oh, thank you. It's a trademark there. <laughs>